Hey guys, be sure to like and subscribe. Today we're going to talk about the expat life of contemplation. You know, when I first got over to the Philippines, one of the things I, I always wanted to do was kind of have time to sit and kind of piece together everything that has happened in my life. You know, and we all kind of look back and, and there's like little pieces that, that are like missing and, you, and, and you're trying to figure out why, or why this happened or why that happened. And some things you just want to leave in the past or whatever, you know, and, you know, it's just something that you don't want to bring 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 with you here and that's that's good but there are some happier times that you know you, you you know you question why some things happened or whatever or you want to look be able to look back at those times with, with you know and and try to remember those times better and i noticed like when i when i got to the philippines i i was able to bring back a lot of those old memories um and it was a kind of a good thing and it, but it kind of brings brings to the forefront like the brevity of life like how quick life goes by you know and I remember coming over here and having a little bit more time to myself when I first got here and it was like wow this is great you know and and being able to think about all those those good memories it was kind of it was kind of a good thing to be able to have that you know and I, I left out I tried to leave out all the bads of course sometimes that crops up every once in a while and it's just just the way things are you know but we try to move past that and 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 I was able to move past that and luckily I did. But I remember like the first few years I had a lot of happiness here. And and now we got this mess going on which is kind of rough and you guys in the United States are just getting back to normal. Well, we're still in this probably for possibly another year because we're, you know, we're waiting for all the vaccines and stuff like that to be taken care of and we're not going to we don't know how that's going to happen. What's going to take place? And you guys are back there waiting to get in here and, you know, you guys might be able to come in here, you know, once you get your vaccine later on. At some point, I would imagine they're going to open things up because they need the money. And hopefully they will. The question is, what's going to be going on over here while you're here for the first six months or a year? Is it going to be happy or is it going to be unhappy? Because maybe they're still going to have restrictions going on because of all this, this mess that's going on. But I'm not sure. I think we're going to start seeing things get lifted too. Dutarte has said that he wants to see it lifted, you know, and things will get back to normal and we can start having our expat life of contemplation again, you know what I mean? And, you know, like, one of the things I like around here is is that, we've talked about this before, living in the moment. And part of that is about contemplation. It's, it's kind of an awesome thing. Contemplation is kind of like meditating the moment or meditate meditation. And it just kind of, it brings like a peace to you. It brings like a, a like a really steady supply of peace, and even during this this mess that we're currently in right now, I mean I've had a lot of time here at the house. Trust me, I've had a lot of time sitting around this house under ECQ, and it gets boring. And and sometimes you have too much time to contemplate, and it's not a good thing. But you know we're 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 trying to move past that. We're we're supposed to be free of this on the 11th or whatever, and hopefully, God willing, that we can we can get past all this garbage, you know, and then start moving forward once and for all, you know, and I, I think it might happen. I think and I hope and I pray that it's going to happen, but we'll see, you know, but I do, I do like my life over here. A lot of you guys, when you come over here, I think you'll understand why, because it's a, it's a sense of freedom over here. Some people say, well, all, uh, the government over there is very repressive. No, it's, it really isn't. Most of the people just kind of ignore the government over here for the most part. I mean, if you're if you're involved with around people a lot and you're involved in out you're out drinking or something like that all the time and carousing around and getting in trouble, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna invite the law into your life, you know what I mean? Because of stupidity or whatever. But if if you mind your P's and Q's over here, you know, and you stay out of all the the huff and puff of of that life then you'll be fine here. You'll be you'll be okay, you know. One of the things I miss the most because of this stuff that's going on is this is that currently I um can't get out much and I like getting out on the water. I love getting out on the water. It's one of my favorite things. When when I was a kid, we used to build boats we used to get old boats that people were, were had sitting in their yards, and I'd, I'd have my 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 dad or my brother <coughs> would bring the boat down to the river and dump it in the river, and we'd build like a fort on top of it, 
And I had this old 1.2 horsepower motor. It was, I think it was called a J.C. Higgins, if I remember correctly. I think it was from the 1920s or something like that. It was like, I believe it was from the 1920s or 30s. It was an old, old motor. It was a 1.2 horsepower. And, and it barely ran. And it had, I believe it had like a worm to bring the water to cool the motor. And the, and the wor worm on one of the motors I had was broken. So it would break down about every 30 minutes. It would overheat. So when it overheat, it would shut down. You'd have to wait 20 minutes and then it would run another half an hour. Okay, so I had another one. And my father was able to fix up both of them. So I had both of them. And I think both of them, if I remember correctly, both of them had the same problem that the, what I think the worm or something, whatever brought the water into the motor to cool it down was broken. So that was part of the problem. It was something to do with the, it was, it was overheating and it would shut down. You'd have to sit there for 20 minutes, you know, and then it would start up again. Well, we didn't care if it was broken or not. We would go up the river, you know, and... We'd carry the motor on our shoulder down to the river. We'd throw it on the back of our little, as I call it, houseboat or whatever, you know. Because we put bunks in that thing and everything, and we would go up the river. And, you know, we had it probably for a summer. And it got kind of kind of rough after a while, you know. And I was, I was thinking about, like, all this stuff the other day, about the times that I had on the river as a kid. And it's almost something like I should write, write a book about or something like that because it was some good times we had on, on the river. We used to do some serious camping. We had tents that we'd take with us and things like that. And, and we used to have bonfires like that you, you could write stories about, you know. I mean, we did some pretty good camping down there. I mean, I remember camping out down there. And, you know, back then, when you were 10, 11, 12 years old, your parents would let you run around free, you know, when I was a kid. And nowadays, when you're 10, 11, or 12, they wouldn't let you do that at all. You know, and now you, you, you're considered way too young and naive. But, I mean, back then, we used to go 20, 30 miles away from home in our canoes and stuff like that or in a motorboat or whatever. And then we'd come back late at night. And my parent, my, my dad never t even blinked an eye. Now, my, my, my mother, she wouldn't let me do stuff like that probably. I don't know. You know, she probably, she was different. Uh, but my father gave me, like, an exceptional exceptional amount of freedom and when I was down at my aunt's house we had the same thing going on there where we had a, an exceptional amount of freedom where we could do things that most kids couldn't do and it, it kind of opened up my life a lot to see what the world was all about at a very very young age we had a very high sense of adventure me and my cousins and my friends um, we were always fishing night fishing sometimes we'd be fishing till two o'clock in the morning underneath the 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 the, the bridge, you know, and we would just be living life, you know, and I've kind of brought that sense of adventure over here to the Philippines with me, and I, I, I want, want to share that with people because I think a lot of people today have lost that sense of adventure, and I think this whole mess that's going on now has taken away that sense, sense of adventure in us from when we were kids, and you need to go back to that you need to have like a little bit of a life of contemplation, like I was just talking about, and look back at that and kind of revive those memories, revive those dreams, and start living those things again. Start doing, you know, exciting things. Look at these guys on YouTube that are, are doing crazy things like living in houseboats, going down the Mississippi. I mean, and 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 these these people that like foresty forests and stuff like that that are, are living in their vans and hiking mountains in the middle of the winter and people that are doing this van life thing and and and, and it's it's kind of an exciting life because they're moving about and living the way that they want to they're they're doing it having like a sense they have this adventure going on almost daily from the time they wake up till the time they go to bed it's it, they have like an adventure going on it shows them traveling around their vans living a good life I know there's bad parts and there's good parts of that. Some parts is, is not having a steady home. But, you know, some of the parts is, is that you're, you're, you're living your life. You know, you're living the life that you want to live, the way you want to live it and how you want to live it. And I know somebody that's living like, like, like that. That's a friend of mine. He lives, basically, he, he kind of lives like a homeless life, but he, he's getting ready to, to live that van life. And, you know, he's getting set up for that. 
and he's 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 not always happy, but you know he's he's happy that he's living the way he wants to live, and he runs into a lot of messes all the time, but you know he's okay. He does he does well, you know, and he's he's happy about it. And I see a lot of other people out there that are living that way, and they're very happy about that. And the choice that I made to come over here wasn't so much a retirement choice. It was a choice that I had dreamed about since I was a kid. I wrote a report in the fourth grade. about The teacher had asked us to write up about places that we would want to live when we were older. And one of the places was the Philippines. The other place was Belize. So for me, for me, I'm truly living my dream out right now. You know, I'm truly living it out. And I'm happy that I'm able to do that, you know. And some people would say, well, you know, that you, you went over there because of lack of money. No, no, no. Because I could have worked longer if I wanted to. And I, you know, I wouldn't have liked it. But I could have worked longer. But I was starting to have, like, back problems and some issues with my legs and stuff like that. And it was really starting to bother me. And I just said, you know, the time, my time is up. I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to go. So... But I kind of put two of those things together. So it was, wasn't just one reason why I left. It was two reasons. And, you know, I was lucky because I had, the, I had income coming in. I'm going to get income again later, Social Security. I'm going to have some other income coming in. And I should be able to do pretty well and, and live very happy. But, I mean, I don't stop dreaming because I'm over here in the Philippines and I'm retired. If anything, it's quite the opposite. I started dreaming more, okay? And I know in this mess, a lot of us are being held down. And we feel like we're being restrained, like we're strapped down to a board or something like that, and we, we're trying to get back up and start living life again. And, and, and that might seem that way for you guys, too, back there while you're waiting to come to the Philippines. I mean, I mean, but if you get over here, there's not much you can do right now until all this stuff lifts. And until this lifts, you know, nobody can really do anything over here because we're in and out of ECQ. We were a couple weeks ago. We were having fun and living life and traveling around, and now we're back into this quarantine thing. But I mean, we're supposed to get lifted on the 11th. We don't know what's going to happen yet. We could we could have till the end of the month. We don't know. We're hoping for the best. But eventually, we will come out of this. And for now, I'm just planning on what I'm going to do. You know, what am I going to do next? Am I going to go out on a boat? You know, am I going to travel around? Of course, I am. You bet I am. And I'm going to videotape it for you guys, too. But, I mean, I just want to kind of share that because it's, it's something to think about, for you to contemplate about, you know, about your life, you know, and where you want to go with it, your sense of your, your direction. Because everybody needs to have direction in their life. And without direction, you have nothing. So you need to have direction. And I know it's, it's tough having direction in today's world. It's tough. But you, you need to like pound through that 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 wall and just say you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna get through this i'm gonna make it and you guys that are back in the u.s are lucky because right now you get to travel about you might have to wear a mask or something like that but even some of those mask restrictions are being lifted and that's great because you guys are getting your freedoms back we're still we still got like maybe another nine months to a year in this or six months we don't know you know so you guys you guys are kind of lucky if I was you guys, the expats that are thinking about that, that are gonna come over here, I would be working right now, doing a security guard job or something like that, so that when you get over here, you can fund some of those dreams when you get over here, you know. So you can fund some of those ideas, some of those those things that you've always contemplated doing or whatever. You need you need to have cash, and maybe some of you guys do have enough cash. But you know what? If you worked for let's say six months, nine months or a year while you're waiting to come over here and you can put away 10000 or 20000 that's a good amount of money, man, to travel around and do stuff over here in the Philippines. It's a lot of money over here for travel because you can stay in some places that are really, really cheap. There's some places you can stay like in a, a cabana-style home. And they're nice little homes, by the way. Some of them you can stay in for like $20, $25 a night. And they got like a sink. They have like an outdoor bathroom and a shower. You know, but they have like a little sink and kitchen inside. Some of them have two little bedrooms inside. They're comfortable. They, some of them have AC. You know, this is, this is, you know, these places are fun. And you're right near the beach. You can go swimming, snorkeling, scuba diving, whatever you want. So, and you can go out on a boat and cruise around or whatever. Hire a boat, you know. But, guys, you need money for this stuff. So plan. 
you know, while you're down, don't waste that time. Spend, spend it working or something like that. Yeah, you're paying by working. I understand that. I understand it's not fun working. You'd rather sit at home, you know. But you can sit you can sit in a car at a security guard job and do the same things that you do at home, basically, on the computer or tablet or whatever, or watch TV. I used to do it. I know. But at least I was making money, you know. And that's the good thing about having, like, a security job or something like that. Just tell me you want a dirt watch. You want to watch some, you know tractors or something in the middle of a field on weekends or something like that you know they'll give you those jobs those security companies are looking for people to do those jobs might be minimum wage but that it's not a big big job to do you know so if you guys are looking for some extra cash before you come here that's the way to do it man you know don't give up on 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 that sense of that, that those dreams and and have direction in your life but to have direction you got to have this you have to have the money you know so you got to do it but anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's show. God bless, guys. Take care and, and have some direction and have some dreams, guys. And, and, and use your time wisely because now is the time to use it because we still got some waiting. In a, we have some waiting to do on this still before people start coming in here. So use that time wisely to save, plan, think, you know, get all your, your stuff together, all your ideas together. Go back and start watching some of my videos. You know, start planning that. Get your whiteboard together. Get everything ready. Get your, 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 your luggage out so you can start planning your luggage and stuff. Get it weighed out pro properly. You know, because if it's overweight, you got to pay a little extra. And most of you guys are going to need that extra weight. Make sure you weigh it out to, you know, call up the airlines and say, for international flights, how much extra can you take? Because if you're an ounce over that, they're going to say no. They're going to make you take some stuff out. You know, so make sure that you have the money also in cash or and also you have a credit card with you when you get to the airport because some of them, I think, I forget whether I had to pay in cash or credit card. I had both, but I think I ended up paying in cash um, for the overage. So you may want to, you know, look into that stuff. But plan, guys. Start doing your planning now. Everything. You know, don't waste that time. God bless, guys. Take care.